Good morning, everyone. Merry Christmas. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish for our celebration of the Nativity of the Lord. We invite you to stand now and sing our opening Christmas carol, O Come, All Ye Faithful. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas. We finally come to this solemn day as we celebrate the Lord's Nativity. And in doing so, we are mindful of the Lord's love for all of us in whatever is going on in our lives especially during this pandemic. And so we ask that you join us in singing in the responses during our Mass today and sing your heart out at home. And so we come together as the family of God, as sisters and brothers of the Lord, as we ask him for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, 
the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people. most sacred day, radiant with the splendor of true light. Grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulders, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, 
will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son given to us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, when he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his holy name. Today is born our Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord, today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Announce his salvation day after day, tell his glory among all the nations, among all peoples his marvelous deeds. Today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them be joyful. Then let all the trees of the forest rejoice. Today is born our Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord, today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. They shall rejoice before the Lord, who comes to govern the earth, to govern the world with justice, and all the peoples with faithfulness. Today is born our Savior. Jesus Christ the Lord, today is born our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord.
From Caesar Augustus to the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will, that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Her parents had just finished putting her to bed. Drink of milk, check. Bedtime story, check. Tucking in the covers, check. Goodnight kiss, check. All done. They turned off the lights, softly closed the door, and were walking down the hall when they heard her cry out as if she were in trouble. Hurrying in, they asked whatever could be the matter. She said she was afraid. It was dark. She was alone. She was afraid. Nothing will hurt you, they assured her. And you are never alone because 
God is always with you. You know that? I know God is always with me, she replied. But tonight, I need God with skin on. So do we all. So do we all. We all need God with skin on. Love in the abstract is a nice idea, but we need a God we can touch. We need a God who touches us. That is why we have the little Lord Jesus asleep in the hay. God with skin on, skin just like ours that hungers to touch and be touched. Jesus is the touch of God for us. Word of the Father now in flesh appearing as the carol sings. Jesus brings the touch of God in faith, hope, and love. Jesus brings the touch of God in endless mercy. Jesus brings the touch of God in sacrificial love. There is no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends, not to mention your enemies. Jesus teaches us that God with skin on feeds the hungry, shelters the homeless, visits the lonely, and forgives the guilty. Christianity was created by God with skin on. In fact, there is no Christian experience without God with skin on, without Jesus. Jesus, not a pleasant memory or a role model of heroic virtue, but Jesus alive, risen from the dead, wearing the skin of the women and men who have followed him in love across centuries, eating his body, drinking his blood, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, visiting the lonely, forgiving the guilty, encouraging hearts broken by life. His risen body, the church, is Christ with skin on, reaching for those who do not know the love of God so that they may feel his touch and touch him in return. Dear friends, we celebrate Christmas to celebrate God with skin on. Born in Bethlehem, born throughout time, in disciples who in his name and in his memory reach out to all who are alone, afraid in the dark. The celebration of the birth of Jesus has meaning beyond his birth and risen presence in his church. There is more to it than that. Let me explain. A few years ago, there was a conference on interfaith dialogue in Rome. One session was devoted to interfaith issues in the troubled lands of Israel and Palestine. A Jewish representative spoke about faith issues and security. A Muslim spoke from their point of view of the conflict. And then a Palestinian Christian spoke. He was Archbishop Elias Chakor, the Bishop of Nazareth, a tiny man. He addressed the council, his powerful voice thundering. I thank God I was not born a Christian. I thank God I was not born a Jew. I thank God I was not born a Muslim. I thank God I was born a baby. Before we were Christians, Muslims or Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, atheists, agnostics, or who choose no religious affiliation, we were all babies, all born alike, all born with skin on, all identical, beloved children made in the image and likeness of one God, a God also born with skin on. Celebrating Christmas reminds us of God's embrace of humanity. People of every race, every language, every way of life, rich, poor, black, white, yellow, brown, straight, gay, young, old, Sinner, saint, married or alone, famous, unknown, talented, struggling, healthy, diseased. 
if you have skin on, you belong to God. And like it or not, if we have skin on, we belong to each other. Events of this year have made it very clear that we have a racial problem in our country. It is still difficult for us to see past complexion and see community. Worldwide religious strife is so great that many think religion is the cause of violence, not the solution. Sisters and brothers, we need Christmas. We need it bad. Each year we celebrate Christmas, sometimes grandly, sometimes simply, even impoverished, sometimes surrounded by loved ones, sometimes all by ourselves. And this year we celebrate with extra caution by wearing masks, keeping social distance, and washing our hands. But however you celebrate Christmas this year, you cannot celebrate alone. And the good news of great joy announced by the angels is for all the people, all people. We are part of each other, and God is with us, all of us. Not just me by myself, gathered around a tree with my family and friends on a Zoom call, but all of us. Not just the people I understand and agree with, but the people who I just can't get whose experience and point of view is foreign to me. Christmas means God is with us, and we need to be creative in finding ways to be with each other. This morning, I'm suggesting that we find our way to God and each other by remembering the sign the angels gave us in the first place. Remember the sign they said would remind us that God is with us, all of us? And this will be the sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This Christmas season, which is 12 days long, spend a few minutes thinking about that infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. Take the angel's advice and meditate on the infant Jesus who was, the infant you were, the infant we all were. That is the sign the angels want us to see, the lesson we need to learn and remember there in Jesus. The baby with skin is the God who will save us from the trouble we are in. He is who we celebrate. Amen. And Merry Christmas. Please stand. We profess our faith by saying the Nicene Creed that is in your worship aid. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With generous and loving hearts, we bring our prayers to the Father. Her response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that Christ may be born in our hearts so that God may be shown to all who live in darkness and are in need of hope, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in power throughout the world, that they may promote life, peace, and justice, and work together for the good of all people, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working or away from home, particularly members of the military, health care workers, and emergency responders, that God will guide their movements, preserve them in love, and bring them home safely, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who celebrate Christmas, that our minds may be more aware and our hearts more responsive to all who are in need, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who find Christmas difficult, especially during the pandemic, that God will touch their lives with love and help them find the support they need. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Leona Dickinson, who we remember especially at this Mass, for all who are seriously ill or hospitalized, especially Colleen Abbey, Joyce Richards, Mary Catherine Dyke, and those suffering from the coronavirus, that God will ease their pain, help them to receive life-enhancing treatment, and restore them to the loved ones. Let us pray. For all who have recently died, including those who have died of COVID, may they know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we ask that you hear our prayers and petitions, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God. indeed holy, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim us to resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, your people spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, 
St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus himself once prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith and courage of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Here are some announcements for our Christmas celebration. Masses for New Year's will be at 6 p.m. on Thursday and 11 a.m. on Friday. If you would like to attend Mass in person, sign-ups will open this Sunday at 10 a.m. The link will be available on the parish website until 10 p.m. Tuesday. Seat assignment emails will go out December 31st. If you come to Mass without signing up, you will not be admitted. There is no walk-in seating now through the end of January due to the intensity of the COVID virus. Please sign up for next weekend's Masses through the parish website or our Facebook page. The link is available after the 9.30 Mass each Sunday. Poor box contributions this week will benefit the food pantry. Thank you for your continued generosity toward the offertory, as well as our Christmas collection. Please continue to send in your envelopes or sign up for online giving through Give Central. Thank you, Sister. Uh, I also want to uh, express uh, on behalf of the parish staff of Seton Parish, uh, we wish you all a, a very uh, healthy and safe uh, Christmas Day and Christmas season and into 2021. Uh, thanks to Deacon Jack for his assistance today and to Brendan uh, and the choir for the music, uh, to Sister Maureen for being our elector, and Mitzi Duras, who is our social media coordinator, who uh, who is responsible for live streaming all of our masses. And we have been blessed uh, in doing this ministry uh, uh, in reaching out to all of you uh, for over two years now. So I am grateful that we've had this opportunity, especially during the pandemic. So Merry Christmas and have a wonderful day and a wonderful Christmas season. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.